one to the next two. Are there any corrections to the minutes? If not, then the minutes are standard three. The next order of business is reading the approval of the agenda. Please take the time to read over the agenda. Are there any questions to the agenda? Yes, President Matthew. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to remove resolution uh, 2023 S1 2001 from the agenda. Uh, reason for this is uh, realize it's not quite ready for the introduced. There's been a motion to remove resolution 2023 S1 2001 from the agenda. Is there a second? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Is anyone abstaining? If not, then the motion is passed. Are there any other corrections to the agenda? <coughs> if not, then we move on to the next order of business, which is public comment. Is there any public comment? If not, we will move on to the next order of business, which is guest speakers. We have no guest speakers. So we will now move on to the next current business, which is old business. Uh, we have no old business. So we will move on to the next order of business, which is new business. First, we have resolution 2023 S1-5001. Treasurer Basa, could you please read it first? So this is the resolution for general body meeting catering and room reservations. Whereas it is constitutionally mandated for the undergraduate student government to conduct general body meetings at a minimum of eight times a semester. And whereas the size and operational needs of USG general body meetings require space beyond what its office can provide. And whereas the general body meetings have traditionally provided catering for its members, then let it be resolved that the undergraduate student government shall allocate up to $7,000 to fund catering services and cover any room costs for the 2023 semester. And let it be further resolved that all unspent funds after the last general body meeting shall be returned to the budget. Thank you. Uh, now that we for the discussion, are there any questions or comments? Yes. So we have set a budget for $550 per general body meeting for catering. That allocates about $13 per person, which is absolutely reasonable considering Many institutions usually pay $25 per person for catering. So, I, and, and nothing's changed uh, since last semester. Last semester, we also allocated $550 per meeting. We didn't necessarily spend that every single time, but we think that that's a very good figure. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? All right. If not, we'll be voting on this resolution next week um next we have resolution 2023 s1 president allen just can you please read this for us so whereas the undergraduate student government seeks to promote civic engagement through voter education and whereas the chicago municipal election is on february 28 2023 and whereas a large portion of the ic is within the 34th aldermanic ward and whereas the candidates for the alderman of the 34th Ward agreed to come to UIC to speak to students on issues they are running on. And whereas USC seeks to build relations with local governments for the benefits of students and the university, then let it be, further, let it be resolved that the undergraduate student government shall host a 34th Ward Alderman Candidate Forum on Friday, February 10th, 2023, from 12 to 1 p.m. Let it be further resolved that the undergraduate student government shall allocate one hundred dollars for a room reservation fee and two hundred dollars for live refreshments for a total allocation of three hundred dollars. Let it be further resolved that any that any unused funds shall be appropriately returned to the ESG budget. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments regarding this resolution? Good question. Yes, can be. Uh, which room is it going to be in? Yeah. So it'll, this will be in room uh, SE six oh five. Are there any other questions or comments? 
And also, um, just to know, I will be using the executive order to vote on this tonight. Uh, the reason for this is because um, I found out about uh, the context for this was I was reached out in the first week of the semester. Um, I, I believe a public policy or public policy or political science professor wanted to host uh, the 34th Ward Alderman candidates uh, to her class, but the university uh, cannot allow that. And so she seeks the help of uh, USG, which uh, perfectly allows for what you want to do, which is create uh, voter education relations with local governments. And, and just one thing to add, this uh, has expected attendance of 40 to 70 students. With that in mind, um, are there any other questions or comments as we will be voting on this today? Yes, Joy, you're in. Um, let me for the or yeah, so um, it's just a standard um, fees. Um, the only thing that we're really paying for is the microphones, which comes at $30 per mic. Um, so we're buying three, so that's um, around like, and that's um, the only fee for this room allocation. Are there any other questions or comments? Yes. Who are the aldermen that are coming to UIC? <coughs> Yeah, so um can't remember their names at the top of my head, so looking it up. Uh, I believe they are Jim Aska and Bill Conway. Are there any other questions or comments? Yeah, um like you use executive order to vote on this tonight. And we will move on to voting. All those in favor of adopting resolution 2023 S1-1001, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Is anyone abstain? If not, then resolution 2023 S1-1001 has passed. Um, with that, we will move on to our next order of business, which is items for discussion. Our first item for discussion is a quick Robert's Rules review as we will discuss here again. Everyone see the screen. Okay. Um, so just a review of the basics, how our meeting is conducted. Um, Robert's rules are basically a set of basic gui guidelines that um, we as student government and also just a lot of governing bodies across the United States use to maintain order during meetings, allow for full discussion of agenda items. Um, and ensure that meetings stay within a lot of meeting time. Um, I know a lot of discussions in here get heated, so Robert's Rules is a way to, uh, to prevent <laughs> sidetracking and um, stuff like that. So some general rules and guidelines for Robert's Rules. Um, to obtain the floor, members must raise their hands and be recognized by the chair, which is me. Um, most motions require a majority, which is over 50%, or two thirds of a vote. Um, of those presents to pass, which means that your abstentions do affect the outcome of your vote. Um, every member has the right to speak and debate, so if you've already spoken, I may skip over you just to allow other members to speak before I call you call on you again. Some basic elements of Robert's rules. <clears throat> the most important element is motions, um, which is basically what we use to do anything. Um, it's used to introduce a piece of business or propose a de decision or action, and it usually needs a second and a majority of votes to pass. Some examples of motions um, that we use are motions to alter the agenda, which yeah, we utilize today, um, motion to recess or table discussion, uh, motion to amend the resolution, and motion to amend a motion. Um, so if someone makes a motion that you agree with, but there's one small thing you would like to change, you are free to motion to amend that motion, um, which will have its own second vote. Um, if you want to make a motion, you say, I move to, followed by the action that you want to execute. Some other useful phrases that we don't use as much, but uh, are more than welcome to. Point of order, um, this is when you want to object to a procedure or um, something that happened in discussion where you feel um, procedure wasn't followed or someone was maybe 
um, speaking out of turn, you can say point of order. Uh, point of information, if you feel as if you want more information on a certain topic that was mentioned, um, you are within your rights to request that information. Point of privilege, if you feel like there's a lot of background, background noise going on, so people are talking around you, or if someone's speaking too quietly or not using the mic, um, you can raise a point of privilege and uh, bring that up. A division of the house is when you aren't really sure about the voice vote, we usually vote by voice, um, and want to uh, call for an actual count to verify the voice vote. Um, and you do this by saying, I call for a division of the house. Um, last but not least, we used this one a couple times last semester, when you want to consider something out of its schedule, which means we've moved past it already in the agenda, but you, you would like to go back and reconsider it, you can say, I move that we suspend the rules and consider whatever you want to consider. <clears throat> Some general etiquette guidelines that I want to reiterate and highlight as we go into this new semester. Um, as student government, we naturally discuss a lot of sensitive and polarizing topics. So with this in mind, um, I want you all to keep in mind that um, we have to be respectful of one another, which means maintaining a professional tone at all times, um, keeping your constructive or <laughs> keeping your criticism constructive, um, and focusing on issues and not personalities. Um, we want to keep discussions formal and limit um, discussion to the topic at hand, um, trying to prevent personal feelings and um, I guess needs to enter the conversation. So um, please be respectful. Um, also speak into the mic because we have people on Zoom who can't always hear everything um, and we want everyone to be making educated votes. Last but not least, please respect the authority of the speaker, which is me. Um, so during a discussion, it can be easy to jump in um, if you have a really pressing point, uh, but please just wait to be recognized by the chair before addressing the body. And when in doubt, please always review, uh, refer to the Roberts Rules cheat sheet. I should have sent it to you all with your orientation materials, but if not, it's also linked on these PowerPoints um, if you're ever confused about anything. Um, with that, I open the floor up for discussion. Are there any questions or comments regarding the Roberts Rules? <clears throat> all right, if not, um, I will send that out to all of you so we can take over it, and we will move on to our next item for discussion, which is SAC Lobby Day training. Um, I believe Chair and then Jair, would you like to do that first? Oh. Um, um, so hopefully, as you all remember, um, SAC presented last semester on kind of who we are and what we do. Can I get a raise of hands if that rings a bell? Yay, wonderful. Um, so Lobby Day is coming up um, February 22nd to be exact. Um, however, before that time, uh, we need around eight to 10 people who feel comfortable uh, being student leaders and guides uh, throughout the course of the day. That is the purpose of this training that is literally this Friday. Um, so basically what we would end up doing is we would all take a train down to Springfield at around seven or eight in the morning. Um, the day initially starts at 11 a.m. They feed us, tell us about the legislative agenda, um, and we get to basically take a tour so that people don't feel lost come February 22nd. Um, the train or travel prices or costs, I should say, will be reimbursed by the office. Um, a letter of excuse will be provided. However, it's up to your professor's discretion on whether or not they choose to accept that letter of excuse. Me, typically in the past, I haven't had issues, um, but also may just depend on the department and the professor. Uh, as of right now, I do not know how many slots are filled. I will be checking in to see how many are filled. However, um, I did email all of the information in writing to Matthew on this past Friday that hopefully he can um, forward to Michelle. We can it to you all. Um, if this event sounds interesting to you, once again, it is this Friday 
Um, you should email Teresa, but I would say no later than tomorrow at 10 a.m. So hopefully I can get that email out you know, as soon as possible to the body. Um, but yeah, the sooner we have a head count, the sooner I can arrange for everyone's travel to make sure everyone can travel together and that there are no issues so no one gets lost. Um, if you choose to drive, once again, that's your prerogative. Um, I think they should reimburse you for that too, but let me double check. So yeah, um, we're all in the group meet. Any questions, you can just DM me. Um, yeah, thank you for your time. Are there any questions, comments, or questions? Let me let Jair speak, sorry. Thank you, Thank you. But yeah, we'll be, we'll be in Springfield this Friday. Uh, we're going to have a tour of the Capitol. Um, we're going to understand who our legislators, representatives are, so we can actually address them on February 22nd. Um, we brought this to the e-board. We brought this to a, group, a few groups as well, but we thought it'd be more than appropriate to bring it up to you all as well. Uh, like Melody mentioned, between eight and 10 people, just to be those Canvas leaders to navigate the surplus of people who will be joining us on the 22nd. Um, but like Melody mentioned, if you're interested in coming with us to Springfield, like I said, to meet legislators, uh, to learn the legislative agenda, which can benefit not only the students, but the faculty as well, you can definitely reach out to me or Melody, and um, we'll get you connected with Teresa. And towards the end of the meeting tonight, if you want, you can totally talk to us as well. But yeah, I mean, you would buy time for any questions. Are there any questions? If not, we will move on to the next item for discussion, which is the faculty union strike. Uh, would Jair like to present this again? Okay, so I think we need to address the elephant in the room, um, and that's the strike. Um, first of all, welcome back, uh, I guess the second time. Um, you know, the energy around campus is kind of kind of still, it's kind of stagnant, you know, we're kind of in this limbo moment where we don't really know what's going on. So I really just wanted to open up this time and space to hear any concerns or frustrations anyone might have. Um, I know we've spoken with a few students and majority of the time their professors told them, you know, or expected them to be caught up with their homework, to be caught up with their assignments. And some students don't think that's fair. Um, but the important note aside, I think, the union and the strike was obviously more than needed. You know, our faculty and our staff and our members need the contracts they more than deserve. And the fact that they thought of us and this time to actually include us in these negotiations as well, with an increase of budget for our mental health services, that is very unselfish for them to do. So we thank them. But as students, you know, it, it impacted us as well. You know, so if um, anyone does have any frustrations or comments they might have. You know, we wanted, we just wanted to open up this space and hear everyone if you, if you all wanted to. Does anyone have any questions or comments regarding the faculty strike? Yes, Representative Slaughter. Um, I personally do feel that it is a bit unfair to, I mean, we understand the circumstances of why the strike is necessary, but to expect students to not only have read the material, but to understand what they were given out of it or what they should be getting out of it when classes weren't even two, three weeks in. Um, you haven't even gotten a feel for the class, nor a vibe of the professor, and nor even the target of what the reading material is. So me personally, I like to ask my professors, well, what do you want me to get out of this? Because otherwise I'm just going to be wasting my time. And if you're not responding to your emails, how is that conducive to a good learning environment for me? I have heard some other folks um, in my class voice concerns of, well, what's going to happen to tuition? And I'm like, well, we know right now there's a tuition freeze. Um, I don't think that tuition should I think personally that everybody should win, that professors should get paid a reasonable amount, and obviously they weren't getting paid that, uh, that students should still be able to have a good value for their education, you know, what they're paying for. Uh, but I know that that is a concern that was raised um, in 
abstract as well. I don't know if I'm going to be able to support my education if, you know, professor salaries. And it should have to come to that, really. But I know that has been concerned. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Yes, Felix. <laughs> As many of you may know, I did speak at the rally uh, last Wednesday uh, and substitute for Matthew since he was um, doing other things. So I think it's very safe to say that the majority of us do align ourselves in agreeing with the purposes and why the strike happened. Um, but I do agree that there should be some sort of safeguards for the students. From my knowledge that there are multiple courses that require their students to do tests, quizzes, and complete homework assignments during that time period. Um, I think that us as a student, as an undergraduate student government, we should look into how that has negatively impacted the students. Um, and uh, we can go back and forth saying who's at fault, but nonetheless, um, it, the effects were have happened to our student body. So I think we should look into that um, and then possibly, if needed, come up with some sort of resolution um, to kind of protect our students and their grades. Because I know, for example, one of my friends who's in Spanish, there were no lectures, there were no classes, um, but they're still required to submit a whole week's worth of assignments tomorrow, but they had no, they had no class. So I can only imagine what it is for an engineering class your science class, degrees that are very rigorous. This still requires our students to take a quiz that Tuesday that we came back when they were on strike. So the, I think the reasons why the strike happened, like um, increasing mental health services, trying to add disability support services on top of that, and other things, very, very important. But I also think it's important to ensure that the grades and the academics of our students aren't being affected because of what was going on behind the scenes. Thank you, Monsi. Yeah, so kind of following up on that, I think something that if we were to make a resolution would be really good to add is this strike happened during ad drop. And I think that was something that was like really important for students, especially like when the first week happens, um, you're kind of going into the second week, maybe in a really difficult course, you want to talk to the professor and find out strategies, ways to like actually succeed in the course. And at least this semester, you couldn't because professors weren't there. And so that's something that if we want to protect students, we would need to, it would be really important to include because professors really need to be available during that period because a student may, may fail a class that semester because they don't know how to how to prepare well and may not drop in time to take that class off the record. Thank you, Nazar. Um, Hello. Yep. I think building upon what everyone else has said, has said um, something that I've also noticed that has been pretty concerning is that a lot of our peers are international students and they pay astronomically high grades of tuition every year. Um, something else we can probably consider as a student government is also how we could protect the time that was lost. Because like I said before, they're paying astronomically high rates of tuition and they have all these lectures, all these discussions that were canceled as a result of the strike. Um, so thinking about how we can protect the lost time as well as their grades, um, I think we can play a good part in that. Yes. Yes, yeah, so these are concerns uh, I have been hearing as well from the, from the student body. And I, I do have to say, now I've been keeping in touch with the union to make sure that student grades are not negatively impacted. So I'm gonna follow up on these concerns with the union because you know I they hold a lot of influence over the professors who decide to participate in this strike. Uh, before the strike happened, Felix and I met with um, the union president and 
full bargaining chair. Um, and one thing we asked was to make sure that student grades are not negatively impact. And so I'll follow up with them this week as um, negotiations are seemingly about to be at an agreement to make sure that each individual professor knows to be more lenient on um, students' grades and be understanding and hopefully um, provide compensation again for that lost time of education. Yes, do I? I want to pass it to Mike. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So I also want to talk about the intervention student process. Um, this question I mentioned is called interesting about how international students are really also uh, most of my friends are international students. And the other problem is like she said, of course, the whole week they all pay and they didn't get education. But also, all of my friends are worried about what's happening next year about tuition because tuition will probably increase. Like everyone thinks that, but it won't be the same probably to an American student and international student. So they are scared of how it will increase more than other students. So um, I think it will be better to explain them very soon because most of my friends talk with their parents about what's happening and what can still be happening. And we don't want to students cut their education because of this reasons. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you, Delay, for bringing that concern. So, um, um, there's a couple of points I want to make. Number one, the strike does not affect student fees, nor does it affect tuition. It also does not influence the academic calendar. It will not be shortened, nor will it be lengthened due to the strike. Um, so, the way the university system works is that when you are enrolled, you are enrolled in a four year cohort where your tuition uh, gets frozen. Not just student fees, your tuition gets frozen. So to your international student friends and to everybody here on campus, next year, there will be tuition increase of about 2%, but that's only for those who are incoming. It does not change anybody who's here right now. For anybody who is here for more than four years, let's say you're into your fifth year, you enter in those new rates because your tuition is only broken for four years. So I hope that clears up any misconceptions that you may have. Um, the other thing that is going up is the student fees, which is about 1.8%. That will influence everybody, regardless of what cohort you're in. So hopefully that helps. Thank you for that. I think we also do appreciate that. But I do just want to go back to the concerns we have. You know, um, UAC has a lot of international students, a lot of international and out-of-state students. Frankly, the majority of us are from in-state, so we get a large amount of FAFSA money. So I'm pretty sure I can speak for the majority of us when I say that we were privileged enough to have our tuition paid for. However, that's not the same for our international and out-of-state counterparts. We still have to pay a lot of money. So let, uh, as you mentioned, the tuition will be frozen. Uh, you, uh, Illinois has a policy that says you cannot increase uh, student tuition after the first year. Uh, the entire system um but you know it doesn't it doesn't address the fact that you know still these international and out-of-state students are still paying a lot of money in tuition because they don't apply, they don't um qualify for fafsa so with that yes tuition pays a lot of things the lighting management food a lot right but still some of that money still goes to paying to have an education you're paying somebody to teach you something and for a week we didn't have that so within that, you know, I think I think it's important for us to have this little conversation because this is not the first time UIC has had a strike. In my three years here, I've experienced two strikes. Within 10 years, there's been over eight strikes, right? So this is not a one-time thing, hey, you know, slap on the wrist, sorry, my bad, it won't happen again. No, this is a reoccurring problem where in this time frame, tens of thousands of dollars are lost in tuition money because they're not receiving the education they deserve, right? So I think it's a conversation that we should all address because like I said, International and out-of-state students do not qualify for a hefty amount of FAFSA, for example, like I do, right? And it's not fair to these students as well, because we, as the undergraduate student government, have to serve this demographic as well. 
So I just wanted to open that up to conversation as well. Um, but if anyone does have any questions or concerns, you can definitely add them as well. Are there any other questions or comments? Uh, okay, uh, Veronica, go ahead. Um, so thanks for all the comments on national students and some of the central students too. But just look on the bright side, it's ended. And I think like in a way of visiting, the professors know what to do with their students since we don't have classes. Yeah, it's not really good since we don't have a, the classes for a whole week. But I'm pretty sure like the professor is gonna cover up or they're gonna just skip this week and like all the assignment or homework might do, but like they can extend the brush. So like I'm just trying to look on the bright side. Like, yeah, this guy might go on, but like for now, um we can still working with we can still work with the other people, but like for the students and professor, um, I feel like we're good. Like there's nothing between like professors and students right now. Because they know what to do. And like with the situation, I think I'm kind of free with Mohammed. Because like um, even though we play for a lot for the situation, but like we kind of like think about that before that we came here. So like um it's not really a big deal, like thank you concern, but like I don't want to put a lot of like, pressure on you. Um share, yeah. But yeah. On the bright side, it's ended, and I think like USC and the whole faculty, we have the whole contract that satisfies both sides, and for now, it's pretty good. Yes, that's it. For the Thank you. Um, Arson? So I'm going to speak on behalf of the class. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't see So I'm gonna speak on behalf of my organic chemistry class, and I'm gonna say that this strike probably permanently affected our semester, just because it's a really fast-paced class. And to the comment, I agree. Luckily, it ended, but what if it went on for another week? We probably would have failed our exam. I mean, the exam's in like one or two weeks, and the professor was taking all the time. Like I personally have about 30 questions that went unanswered. So, and also I paid full tuition, so it is a little unfair to us too. But yeah. Felix? I know um, a comment was made about the ad drop period. So the one thing with that is there are, I'm not 100% sure on what the laws are, so maybe the legislative uh, committee can look into it, but I'm pretty sure there are laws um, and regulations stating that the university has to have that fixed state for ad drop periods in relation to funding and uh, financial aid. So um, that was a concern that was brought up actually by the bargaining committee because the university was claiming on their website that they would extend the ad drop period. But um, through the research done by the faculty, they have brought that point up. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's been reviewed, but I don't think an official statement has been put out about anything. So um, maybe the legislative committee can look into that to kind of see um, how that works and if that is a possibility, because if it is, I think that'd be great. But if it can't, then because of financial aid, then obviously it can't. But I do agree, I think there needs to be like a hard set commitment by the faculty union because they said, yeah, sure, like it's not going to really affect the students, but that's not the case. You know, students are being affected by it academically because they're forced to take tests during that week. Uh, and that was. We met with them before the strike happened, so I think we should meet with the uh, uh, leaders of the faculty union to get some sort of united statement from all the teachers. But then again, it doesn't include the teachers who um, weren't on strike, so I don't know. I don't know what we can do, but we should do something. <clears throat> this is kind of a comment um, regarding international student concerns and affairs. Um, I know there's like diff different opinions regarding um, the resources afforded to international students and opinions regarding those resources. 
And um, a project that I'm actually working on that I was going to introduce during my uh, report is I'm trying to create an international student advisory board so that international students have um, administrators as well as um, just a direct contact to resources that they can reach out to outside of USG because we do represent a large amount of students. We represent all undergraduate students. And if international students had that sort of board, they could um, understand and really reach out to who they need to. Um, and so if you, any of you guys are really interested in um, making sure that international students have those resources that they need, please reach out to me in um, regards to this project. Um, uh, Just a question for me. Earlier on, Muhammad, you mentioned that there was a 1.3% increase in student fees. I've been trying to look that up online, but I can't seem to find any information on that. Um, so what does the student fee entail? So I believe a press release was sent out, but I'll forward it to you when I find it. So essentially what happened is that we voted to increase tuition uh, 2% for the incoming class and then 1.8% for student fees across the board. So when you go to your UIPA, when you see the student, student fee, the library fee, the ITSF fee, so forth, all of those are going up, up by 1.8%. Um, these numbers were not made by the system. They came from UIC themselves. There were student committees um, and other units utility wise and auxiliary wise who came together and said we would like 1.8% increase due to rising cost of inflation, rising cost of operating, and so forth. This follows after eight years of not increasing it. For tuition, we only increased it twice in the last eight years. So we're definitely subpar when it comes to keeping up with inflation. So they were meager at best. And I think it's although we don't like increasing costs, it is an added city if you want to keep things running here. So that's why we did it. With that, we will end discussion. If there's anything else anyone wants to comment on, please reach out. Um, <laughs> and we will move on to the next order of business, which is the ex officio reports. Uh, may we please have the report of the advisor? <clears throat> Welcome back, everybody. It's good to see all your faces in the room. Uh, and I hope you everybody had a, a good break. I appreciate very much the conversation today and the many different perspectives folks are taking uh, regarding this issue that does affect our students and affects our faculty on a high level. So, uh, very good discussion today. And as we continue to look for ways to support our students' body in uh, a time of difficulty for them, uh, finding you know, opportunities to support them. Uh, Moving forward, I do want you to know that starting next week, uh, Fred's going to be attending these meetings in my absence. Uh, there's going to be an announcement tomorrow on taking on a new role at the university. Um, and so I can't share any of it right now, but once I can, I will. But Fred will be uh, taking over for government advising uh, starting tomorrow afternoon. So uh, if you have questions, please please forward them to Fred. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you for the last few years, um, and I wish you nothing but the best of luck. Thank you. Um, are there any questions regarding the report of the advisor? Uh, if not, the report of the advisor will be filed. And thank you for working with us all these years. Um, next, we have the report for the city trustee. Uh, no report for the Okay. Um, with that, we move on to the next order of business, which is officer reports. May we please have the report of the president? So welcome back everyone. I hope everyone's coming back from a restful break, eagerness and excitement for what's ahead of us. I want to start our semester of student government uh, with a story. You know, the story is about an experiment. I'm sure some of you may have heard about this. It starts with scientists that were studying insects putting a group of fleas into a jar. At first, the fleas were able to jump out the jar. A lid was placed and fleas were left undisturbed for several days. Scientists returned to the jar and removed the lid. They found that the fleas jumped no higher than the lid 
that was placed. Even with the lid removed, the thieves cannot jump higher than the lid. This behavior has been set for the rest of their lives. And more so to that, the police offspring were also conditioned to not jump higher than the level of the lid, despite the lid no longer being there. My fellow UC members, this is, this is a story that reflects a lesson of limitation. And as we begin the second semester of the academic year, I want to take a moment to remind us all of the incredible power and potential we possess not just as individuals, but as a community. Each and every one of us has the ability to make a difference, whether it's through our studies, through our extracurricular activities, or through our involvement here in the undergraduate student government. As we move forward with the semester, I encourage you to reflect on the match list that may limit us. I encourage each and every one of us to set new goals for yourself and to take advantage of the many resources we have here at this university and opportunities available to us as students. Remember, our voice and ideas are important and needed. It makes our student government functional, and we are here to support each other. Finally, let's not forget that our time here at this university is not just about getting a degree, but also about shaping the person we want to be in the world we want to live in. We start by making a positive impact on our campus and community. Today, the dedication we show in the upcoming months to our undergraduate student government values of advocacy, service, and governance will make its mark on, on this university and present a lasting impact for future generations. Together, we are forced to be reckoned with. I have no doubt that we'll achieve great things this month. So thank you. And I use my time for questions. Questions regarding President Alex's report? If not, the report of the president will be filed. Next, we have the report of the vice president. Hey, everyone. Um, great to hear from the back. Um, Matthew and I are meeting with um, Bob Dixon this Friday, and we're setting up meetings with other administrators like Provost Talley. Um, at our e board meeting last Friday, I uh, met with President Matthew, Chief Staff Hatfield. We're great to discuss the spring agenda and our progress through that. Um, wrote up a rough draft letter for campus care. I'll go over that with Matt sometime this week. Uh, with Speaker Michelle and President Matthew um, to discuss initiatives specifically related to mental health. And the uh, working group for the reading and review days is set, and we have a meeting, um, not the exact day, but sometime in February. And yeah, it's ending my report. Thank you. Are there any questions regarding uh, Vice President Zanardi's report? <coughs> if not, then the report of the Vice President will be filed. Next, we have the report of the Treasurer. First and foremost, Welcome back to school, everyone. I hope you all had a tremendous winter break. So firstly, I've been corresponding with the Dean of Students Office just to ensure that all of our previous orders have been filled and picked up. I'm also notifying them of upcoming USG endeavors. I attended the first advisory meeting in which we provided our advisor key with an update on potential future initiatives. I'm initiating conversations with UIC Catering just to make sure that there's nothing that we necessarily need to change this semester and just to make sure that everything is seamless with our agenda. I'm also working with the Treasury Committee in ordering the items for the winter wear, helping hygiene, and spring supplies initiatives. Those RFFs have been submitted as of this week. And additionally, for the Treasury Committee, we are figuring out a time to set our weekly meetings. I'll have an update for that next week. And lastly, I attended the first e-board meeting of the semester. And if you have any questions or inquiries regarding our budget, please don't hesitate to reach out. I know this is something that I say a lot, but if you have any ideas about initiatives or anything related to money, please come out to, please come and speak to me. I'm generally available to have a meeting if you are interested, and my email is right there. And to conclude, I want to show you all a spring GBM1 budget update. This is the exact same budget update that I had Deputy Latoya give last. Uh, at the last GBM of the fall semester. But pretty much, you can see that we spent close to 20,000 in the fall semester. 
And the main thing that I want to highlight here is that we have just under $50,000 to spend in this semester. So keep your mind on how we can spend this money. But thank you. I yield my time for questions. Thank you. Are there any questions regarding the treasurer's report? If not, then the report the treasurer will be filed. Next, we have a report for the speaker. Uh, happy spring semester, everyone. Um, I hope you all have a splendid winter break. Um, jumping right in, USG applications are open. Um, please encourage your friends and classmates to apply. So if you're in any class group chats, um, et cetera, stuff like that, just send it in there. Um, the form is available on the USG website and via the link to on our Instagram. Um, applications are due February 3rd, and speeches and voting will occur on uh, February 6th, GBM. So it is really important that all representatives are present for this meeting. Um, another thing I just want to add in there, involved in fair is going on, it went on today, um, and we'll have another in-person booth on Wednesday. So if you're available to help out with that, uh, please reach out to me or Danya, um, and we would really welcome the help. Um, as Mike mentioned, the Reading Days Working Group meeting is set, which is super exciting. Um, and I'll have a dialogue with President Matthew and Duke Michael to discuss some strategies for our asks um, with Reading Days. Um, I'm in the process of scheduling a meeting with um, Assistant Vice Chancellor for our Silicon just to touch base on the health uh, this semester, especially with all the um, faculty union stuff that came up uh, regarding mental health. And last but not least, I met with President Matthew at the break to discuss some objectives and goals for the semester um, and some changes to um, the representative point system. Uh, are there any, are, I yield my time for questions. Are there any questions? Yes, Marcy. Will the representative point system be going into effect this semester or is it for next year? Um, so it will be going into effect this semester. Technically, it is in our bylaws to do it. We just um, chose not to do it last semester um, because we didn't agree with how the points were administered. So with some tweaks, hopefully it'll be um, a lot more fair. Uh, and yeah, are there any questions regarding that? Yes, Brina. This is a different question. That's fine. Um, do current representatives have uh, to rerun by that date, or is that a different thing for us? No. So um, if you ran in the fall, your term extends for an entire year, so it'll end this spring. Um, there will be a whole thing with like student elections um, for next year's terms, but you don't have to run again by February 6th. Okay. Are there any other questions? Tom? If not, then the report of the speaker will be filed. Next, we have the report of the Chief of Staff. Well, welcome back times two. I hope you guys are getting into the swing of things again. We had our first e-board meeting on Friday, and it was nice to hear starting off the semester and discussing important things like temporary strike this will be a bi-weekly meeting so not this friday but next we will have one and director meetings begin this week so i've already met with two directors today i messaged you all your respective times and if your time is different this week i messaged you that also um, be sure to communicate with me if i ask you about scheduling issues um again involvement periods this week so please sign up to be involved we still have wednesday uh as in person and virtual and then I'll be working on the 100 day report for the state of the student event we will be doing. And in general, I can't wait for the semester. If you guys have any initiatives you want help with, I'm always here. Thank you. Are there any questions regarding the report of the Chief of Staff? If not, the report of the Chief of Staff will be filed. Next, we have the report of the Director of Diversity and Inclusion. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Um, so the first thing I have here is the Diversity and Inclusion Town Hall. Um, make sure to book it in your calendars. It's exactly two weeks from now from 3 to 5 p.m. Make sure to keep in mind, town halls are required for all representatives to attend, unless you have class or work. 
Um, and it's going to be in Student Center East, room 302. And so basically, we'll be hosting a panel style town hall, reaching out to administration um, currently to confirm attendance. I've reached out to the cultural centers, um, the uh, vice chancellor for diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, and the vice chancellor, vice chancellors confirmed to come. Um, and also student and legal services, a member of their team will be coming and reaching out to um, the office of, uh, to UIC Global um, for students to represent, for administration to represent international students. Um, if there are any other administrators that um, you wanna see there, once again, reach out to me. Um, and also please reach out to your, uh, your friends or any student orgs that are interested in showing support um, because it's their chance to get questions answered. Um, yeah, and we'll be having some coffee, hot chocolate, and light, light refreshments there. Um, second thing, public comment section. Um, I'm working with, not past tense, currently working with Director uh, Chaudhary to put up flyers in Student Center East to improve the public comment section. Um, and then something that I miss putting on here is I have started working on putting together reaching out to administrators regarding the International Student Advisory Board. Um, yeah, so I've reached out to UIC Global. We'll be reaching out to the Office of International Affairs um, to kind of breach the waters, see how, um, see what they think about it. And uh, yeah, other initiatives, G and Brina are continuing to work on planning um, events regarding mental health. And then kind of a general note for me, that outdated now. Um, that the strike is over, but uh, yeah, the strike went on for a week. Hopefully you guys held out and will recover from the impacts that it had. That's all for me. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments regarding Director Guma's report? If not, then the report for diversity and inclusion chair will be filed. Next, we have the report for legislative affairs chair. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, I know the semester started off with a few uncertainties, but I'm hopeful you're all adjusting with your courses and coursework. Um, in the previous weeks, I was able to attend a few bargaining sessions with the union to further understand the situation. Uh, in the second session, I was accompanied by Nazra and Lauren, so it was, it was great to have some members involved. Um, on a note from last semester, we will be hosting uh, or UIC will be hosting a Chicago mayoral candidates on February 8th. So some candidates will be here. Um, this event was taken over by WBEZ, so it's a little, has a little twist to what we could have imagined. But uh, basically there will be three locations. It will be Wright College, uh, UIC, and the University of Chicago on three different dates. UIC is February 8th. And we don't know which three candidates will be here for security purposes. Um, but if you're interested, like I mentioned, February 8th, it will be, um, I believe it will be in the Illinois room, but I'll keep you all posted on that. But as always, if you have any questions or concerns, my email is right here. I yield my time for any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions regarding uh, Director Alvarez's report? Thank you. If not, then the report of the legislative affairs chair will be filed. Next, we have the report of the public affairs chair. Yeah. So, merchandise was recently delivered, uh, and our committee is organizing it for the citizens and office for us to grab just wait for some reason on that. Uh, we had a small problem with the water bottles and bags uh, that you purchased off the website. So we um, created new designs on a more reliable website to stay under the same pricing. Um, just get email the body with new designs and quantity, and she wants to apologize to everyone. But everyone will receive the item that they asked for. Um, I think we're working with Zayn to keep the Instagram posts. Um, spotlights, applications, volunteer, etc. And a huge shout out to Zaina for working so hard on the best graphics ever. So, yeah. also, web designer Mauricio has been working really hard to keep our current website up to date. 
and also work behind the scenes on our website. So thank you so much. Uh, it is decided to announce that the new website will be launched in approximately two weeks after getting some feedback from our focus group that helps a little the new website and then she currently decided that it is in the meantime. And any questions? Thank you. Any questions, please reach out to Kempe and the report of the public affairs share we filed. Next, we have a report of this director of student success. She wants to Hey, everyone. Um, welcome back and happy new year. I hope this semester has been treating you all well. So I will be meeting with Dr. Kochi this upcoming Friday. Um, she's associate dean for the College of Engineering um, in order to discuss different initiatives we spoke about earlier. Um, I have started receiving emails from applicants interested in USG and in the student success committee. So keep up the good work and promoting USG. And I will be sending a one to meet very soon um, for my committee. So please be on the lookout for it. And I'm looking forward to the semester. And I yield for questions. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments regarding um, your report? If not, then the report of the student, student success chair will be filed. Last but not least, we have the report of the campus life chair. Okay. Hi guys, I'm going to read this um, report. We hope that everyone had a restful winter break. And this past Friday, we heard students who met with the Glory C9 faculty and President Matthew to find out the state of bargaining. On Monday, January 16th, President Matthew and him attended the final bargaining session for the faculty strike. On Wednesday, January 18th, he gave a speech at the UIC Union faculty rallies, and President Matthew was unable to attend. On Friday, January 20th, Commissioner Felix reached out asking for contact information regarding the UAC night ride and gave an update on the first campus day two committee meeting. On Friday, January 20th, he attended the first USG board meeting and they discussed the status of UAC being a faculty strike, lobby day, and other housekeeping matters. Thank you. Um, please direct all questions to Director Felix and the report for campus lecture we filed. Um, so we'll now move on to our next order of business, which is announcements. Are there any announcements? If not, we'll move on to I have a quick announcement. Is there a second? Okay. Okay. All those in favor of the Jordan, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Is anyone say? If not, then the meeting is turned at 7 3 p.m. Don't forget. Y'all are interested in uh, 